All right, welcome everybody. This is Lorette and Alicia. Alicia, say hello. Hey everybody. All right, this is the Learning Tube. And on this session, what we're going to do is have an open Q&A session. We always have people that have questions. So, you know, usually we have a specific topic and you ask questions on that topic, but this session, it's open. So if you've got questions on anything that has to do with internet marketing, anything marketing, business building, anything in that area, we will answer it. If we can't answer it, then we are going to find the answer for you. <laughs> so you just go ahead and put your questions into the question box so that we can answer them. So if you've got questions on you know, social media, any of the past stuff that we've talked about, we've done some stuff on Instagram, uh, we did Twitter, we've done Facebook, uh, we did Facebook instant articles in the last session. Um, we've also been sending out some short, quick tips for those of you that, and we posted on our LearningTube channel. Just out of curiosity, have you guys had an opportunity those good tips and have they been helpful to you? All right. Yeah, we've had somebody, the quick tips are great. Somebody says they love the last one. Yes, so the last one was all about backing up your files. And I talked about how important it is to have a backup of your computer because I know um, it's happened to me. I know it's happened to Elisa that your laptop crashes, your computer crashes, and everything is gone. So, you know, one solution that I had was to have an external hard drive, but that didn't work out for me. Because Oh, I thought it was my sound that went, but it sounds like it's Lorette sound that went. Can you guys hear me? It's Alicia. If you can hear Alicia, just type an A in the chat box. I want to see who can hear Alicia because it says Lorette Little is talking, but I don't hear her. All right, so you guys are pressing A that you can hear Alicia. So let me just send Lorette a quick message um, that we can't hear her. Technology, technology. I thought it was me, but um, it's somebody, William said there was no sound. So, all right. So, while we wait for Lorette to come back on, I'm going to answer some questions myself. And if the audio ever goes, you definitely um, let us know. William says there's a snowstorm on that side. On that side of the island, no, no snowstorms. And to make you guys jealous, I was at the beach today. Yes, I was. So sorry, I guess I shouldn't post that, but yes, I was at the beach. Um, anyway, <laughs> Tracy has a great question. I am new to internet marketing. How should I begin? Tracy, that is like the biggest question ever, right? But here's the answer to that question. Well, how you should begin depends on what you're passionate about, where you're coming into this business. So a lot of questions that I ask, I do coaching for a lot of people who have the same question. They're like, I'm new to it and I want to start off right and not spend the years and years um, running around trying to figure out what to do and where to start. So, I mean, some people are passionate about writing, so they go into the Amazon, Kindle, and book publishing. Some people are passionate about social media, so they go into social media management or promoting products and services with social media. So there's a lot of different avenues that you can go down. Some people are, are passionate about affiliate marketing. Some people are coming into this industry with talents and skills, so they want to create products around that. <clears throat> Some people even want um, to start off the easy way, like freelancing and make a few thousand dollars a month doing that. So Tracy, tell me, you know, I know you're new to it, but I know you have a little bit of experience. Um, so tell me a little bit about what you're thinking. What are you thinking? What are your talents? Where would you like to start? Let's start there. All right. And for the rest of you, while we're waiting for Tracy to type that, what other questions do you have? Anybody else have any other questions? Anyone with any other questions? Type any question in. It could be any question about internet marketing, it can be any question about running your business, 
uh, you know, we've been doing this internet marketing thing for, I'm trying to think of how many years. Oh, this is my 17th year. Year number 17. So I really do um, love to coach people and answer questions so that we can really help them get to the right place in their business. Um, especially, you know, since we have a lot of experience. All right, so I see some questions coming in. If you haven't asked your question yet, please do so now. <clears throat> so I see a question here from Sandy, and it just says, all right, I see Rich is having Dale. All right, so you guys are putting in questions. Let me get to Sandy's first. Sandy's question is, um, I have a roadblock because I don't know how to do a lot of things like website design, graphic design, and copywriting. All right, so let me get to that question first. I'm going to change the presenter to me. Give me one second. I'm going to change the presenter to me and then answer that question. It's actually a question that I like to answer, and I bet a lot of you have that same question. So let me ask you that. How many of you struggle with the fact that you can't get things done, so you run into roadblocks, or as I like to, to call them, you, you know, there's these breakthroughs that you need that you, you can't get to because you're, you know, stuck with, I don't know how to do this, so how am I going to get it not done? If that same question applies to any of you, type me in the chat box. And I'll answer this. All right, Tracy says me as well. So I'm answering this to, Rich says it's happened. I'm answering this question for all of you. All right, I'm going to change the presenter to me. I'm going to show my screen and answer this question. So I actually love this question because I don't know how to do everything myself. I, I know how to do some things, but not everything. And then even on that note, you don't you shouldn't want to do everything yourself. So here's an example. A lot of us need an assistant. I have a full time assistant, but even she gets overwhelmed with stuff and I just want little projects done. So I hire virtual assistants. So if you go to Fiverr.com and this one just popped up. Let me see if this is actually one of my students. I also teach people how to work on Fiverr. I'm trying to see if this is one of my students. It looks like it is. So you can see that this person here, let me get rid of this question log. Let me make sure you guys can see my screen. Yes, you should be seeing the Fiverr website. So this girl here says she will be your virtual assistant. She's got amazing reviews. Um, she wants you to communicate with her first. Wow, awesome work. People are saying it's a good experience, all that kind of stuff. Just want to, she's a level two seller on Fiverr. Is everybody familiar with Fiverr? I talk about it all the time, so I just want to make sure that you're familiar with it because I do talk about Fiverr all the time. Yes, you guys are familiar with it? Yeah, she is one of our students. She's from Jamaica. Um, let me just send you her, let me see, um, in... I'm going to send you guys a link in the chat box. Hang on one second. All right. So this girl here will be your virtual assistant. Now, she doesn't say how long she will be your virtual assistant for, which a lot of virtual assistants will say, like one hour, two hours. She just says um, she'll make sure that she completes it. So you should send her a message and tell her what you have in mind, and you can see how much it will cost you. But why not have a virtual assistant to help you with the things that you need to get done? This girl has excellent reviews, and you can hire her for just $5. You can see she has two orders in queue, so she does work quite often. That is an excellent way to get work done. Do you agree? And I was looking at something else that she says that she does. I don't even know what this is. I will be your Moodle course creator and designer. I'm interested because she's got 30 nine gigs on this and hmm, let me see hey, what this is all, all about that I'm and I'm looking at your screen and I've never heard of a Moodle course creator no she says I will use articulate PowerPoint etc to create an entire course given the content 
from you to be uploaded to your Moodle site. I can also create a course given the content for you in Moodle with everything you need. I will create and design your Moodle, do your Moodle backend and frontend tasks, and site modifications. I'm a quick, accurate, meticulous worker. What is a Moodle? Um, so you know, look at this review. Understand? Awesome. Say it again, Mara. She's on it. It's awesome that she's gone into such a small niche, and it's obviously working for her. She has some great reviews. That's yeah. smart right there. So learn something and offer it, right? Right. I mean, right now we're just talking about outsourcing it. The question was, I can't do everything myself, so how do I get things done? Like my roadblock is that I can't build a website, I can't do graphic design. That was the first question. So I was suggesting to hire a virtual assistant, and so I've kind of gone down that rabbit hole looking at this virtual assistant, and then, at Laurent, look up what a Moodle site is. <laughs> and, and then she says that she does these Moodle sites, but um, Lorette had a good point, too. Like, if you want to make money, this, this is one of our students. We teach people how to work on Fiverr and make money all of the time. So... Uh, yeah, we did go down a rabbit hole there. I'm going to open up another fiber window, 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 because I want to keep her. Uh, I want to find out what that is, and maybe I want a Moodle site. <laughs> but for example, I tell you guys to create courses in Udemy all the time. So why don't we search for people who do Udemy work um, here on Fiverr? I will provide you with a Udemy course within your budget. I will design your full Udemy course on any marketing topic. Uh, let's see. I will design your Udemy course cover image. I will promote your Udemy course. I will design your Udemy course image. I will provide you. I will send you my yeah, course. I, I have your a lot of times people have roadblocks and they don't continue with their projects or whatever they're doing because they don't know how to do a certain step in the process and, it, and they stop. I mean, that's extremely common. But with the opportunities that are out there, all these people that can do all these different things, that should never be an excuse because you can always find somebody that can do it for you. And it doesn't have to cost you a fortune either, which is great. Yes, yeah, so this person says... You know, are planning on launching a Udemy course soon, then you must get this gig, and it's a comprehensive guide, step-by-step, -step, everything to get your Udemy course up and running. I will help you create and sell your Udemy course. So um, to answer your question, go to Fiverr. So you're saying that you wanted a, a website done. So just type in website design in Fiverr. Hire someone to do it for you. You say you can't get graphics done, go into the graphic design section and hire someone to do it for you. There are so many people here that do such amazing work. Fiverr is my favorite website, the one that I talk about and I use all the time. So use it. Did that help you to answer your question? Was that Sandy? And I know Rich and Tracy also said that they've got this problem as well. So you guys, did that help to answer that question? All right. So, all right, everybody's saying yes, yes. Um, William put in Moodle, Moodle.com. Lorette, did you check it out? What is Moodle? Uh, it's a teaching platform. So it, like you it lets you build a perfect education solution for your needs. Pretty cool. We should check it out. <laughs> and, well, we should just hire her to tell us more about it and do it for us. <laughs> all right. All right, so we have a question here from Brenda. She's saying there's not a lot of traditional admin jobs being offered on Fiverr, so what is your suggestion on Fiverr? Because a lot of the jobs, she says she cannot do them. So my recommendation is to put up gigs on stuff that you can do. So if you can transcribe, do a gig that's specifically for transcription. If you can do Google research, do a job that's specifically for Google research as opposed to to I will do anything admin related. So be specific and then go in the buyer requests and find people that are looking for those specific things. Doing those buyer requests are very important. That's really going to help you um, get a great start. Um, and yeah, anything else you want to add to that, Alicia? 
Also, to learn new skills about something you're passionate about, this Moodle example was a perfect one, right? So, so if you see a job that a lot of people are doing and you say, I can't do it, well, go see if you can do it. We have a lot of students who go to YouTube and just learn how to do things on YouTube um, and turn those into gigs. So like Elise said, expand what you do know, and you can also be specific on what you know as well. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, let me see. I think there was another related question. Oh, the traditional admin jobs. I think when people post for admin jobs, they're not specific enough because a lot of admin jobs, for example, a friend of mine says that his administrative assistant, she does data entry, transcription in his office. Like she does all the things that you would do online. But when he's hiring for something on Fiverr, he's not really looking for administrative tasks. He's looking for a small task, like someone to do transcription or data entry. So it might also be that you set up your gig for those your gigs for those tasks that you can do. Yeah. All right. Um, Lorette, talk a little bit more about the arbitrage me method because. Rich is saying I he he liked the arbitrage method using Fiverr that we taught and talked about a couple webinars ago. Re um, bring that back up again. Tell everybody about about what it is. Hey, I'm assuming that's the like the Dale logo. Is that correct? What yes. You're referring to. Yeah. Correct. So that is so the example that we use. We have one of our students who works with local. He works doing a lot of local stuff. And local businesses don't know about Fiverr. They don't know about Upwork and Fiverr. A regular person doesn't even know these sites exist. So what he does is that he does graphic design um, with his quote unquote local business. And he charges, for example, $200 for logos to get made. And he goes on Fiverr and he hires three different logo designers for $5 each. So he spends $15. And he hires three people just for the purpose of getting, you know, variety. So when he's presenting it to the client, they're like, wow, you gave me three different versions and they're all different. Um, so then he presents it to the client, spent $15, or well, it's $6 now, but um, so $18, and um, has the client pick out of that. And he um, charges the client $200. And the same thing with other things. So like for if they wanted a website built, for example, he would charge them like $2,000 for a website and he would get somebody on Fiverr to do it for $200 um, and make a huge profit on that. So it's very uh, lucrative when it comes to doing that type of method. Um, so yeah, it's a great opportunity. You can also go to places like Craigslist. I mentioned going to Craigslist. On Craigslist, um, it's craigslist.org, but a lot of people on there are looking for, for example, logo design. So if you go to uh, Craigslist, and then if you go to, I think it's work uh, gigs or something like that. But you know, if you browse around, you can see that people are looking for stuff. People want websites created. People want logos created. People want all sorts of things. But you can contact those people and say, "Hey, I can do a logo for you for whatever, two hundred dollars." And then you just go get it done on Fiverr. Pay the Fiverr person their five dollars or ten dollars and you're the go-between um, and facilitating it. So it's definitely uh, a great strategy right there. All right, sounds good, Lorette. Um, so do you see any other questions, Lorette? Answer Dale's question, doing local, he says, do you do local SEO and what tools do you use? So actually we don't do local SEO anymore. We just do local social media, um, right. not really the SEO. And one of the reasons for that is that our clients with, S with, um, with the social media, they get fast results. So you can put up an ad and see results right away. Social media, I mean, doing SEO is just a lot slower. You know, it takes, sometimes it takes, you know, a few, a month or a few months for something to really show up in Google. There's a lot of different tools out there nowadays that you can, you know, manipulate 
get stuck and get shown up a lot faster, but nothing like social media. So we've actually had some clients that we had doing SEO and we switched them over to stop doing SEO and start doing um, start social doing media. social media. Yeah. But I think if, if you do have a client that wants SEO, we still use, you want to talk a little bit about the SEO reseller, Lorette? Yeah, I don't have the link for that, though. Do you? Um, no, but we can send it out. Maybe we'll, we'll send it back out on the replay. But what it is, it's basically outsourcing it. So we say, yes, we'll do your SEO for you, and then we send it out to an SEO company. And the SEO company does it, and of course we put a markup on it, so we, we don't actually do it ourselves. Another company does it, and they provide a report, they provide everything. I mean, we real, honestly, we really don't do anything. We're just the, the middle person, and the company does it. We put up a markup, we hand over the report at the end of the month and say, you know, here are your stats and so forth. So another way to get other people to do the work, just like the fiber arbitrage method. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's how we would do SEO if we were doing it. And that's the way we did it um, before we got into all the social media stuff. And Alicia will find that link and we'll send it out um, when we send out the replay, but um, the company that we use that does the SEO. Uh, right, I'm actually looking for one other company to show everybody. Um, all right, here we go. If you do not know this website, it's cool. It's called SEO Clerk at SEOClerk.com. And what you can actually do here is find, it started off as a place where you could find, let me see if you guys are seeing my screen. Yeah, a place where you can find people to do SEO for your website. But now it's like a mini Fiverr. And there's a whole bunch of different categories that you can get into. So for example, if you click on Marketplace and scroll down, you can get someone to do link building, programming, Yahoo Answers, reputation management, um, the social bookmarking. Now, one of the things with the arbitrage that you can do as well is you could sell on Fiverr for someone to get more followers. Now, you can't say, they, they stop this. Let me try to give an example. So if you go to Fiverr, you're not going to see anybody set up the gig that says, I will get you a thousand Facebook followers. And that is because they set up some rule where, you know, Facebook, the social networks don't like that. So, you, so they word it that says, I will get you more followers on your social network. And then in the description, they talk more about it. But the title is different. Anyway, looky here. You can get 7,000 Twitter followers for $6. Well, this is something you could sell on Fiverr for $25 and then keep the difference. And if you even sort it by price, price low to high, you are going to see a bunch of gigs that you can even get for a dollar. Let me show you real quick. Okay, going back down. So you can get a thousand retweets for just a dollar, 150 Twitter followers for a dollar. Now on this site, it's similar to Fiverr in that you see the positive ratings, you see how many times people have bookmarked it as their favorite, and you see the level that someone is on, and you see the bad ratings that they've got as well. So stick with people that have ratings and that are a level one or higher. Look at all the level threes, right? So you can see it's an exciting site when you think about the possibilities of what you could do for flipping, like um, Rich was saying here. Cool? Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, so Rich has uh, another question here saying, has daily deals like Groupon slowed down for small businesses to utilize and acquire customers? So for those of you that don't know, I think Rich is obviously of our deal site profits uh, members, but you know, we did Lorette's audio fade out again for anyone? I know it's not me this time. I'm just going to open the question log to see if Lorette faded on us again. 
She's having rainstorms on her side of the island. So hang on, opening the question log so I can see what you guys are writing. How come it's not opening? Ah, uh, yes, Lorette faded out again. <laughs> so sorry about that. So Rich's question was, I'm going to repeat it again. Have daily deal sites like Groupon slowed down for small businesses to utilize or to acquire customers? Now, if you go to Groupon, you will see, or Living Social, you will see that they are still rocking and rolling, that people are using them, that there's still thousands of coupons being used, Groupons being used. There are, they're still advertising and going strong. So it's still something that you can do, especially for um, different things like resorts and different local businesses. Groupon is really focused on, let me see if I can go to the site and show you guys real quick. Groupon is really focused on local business deals. They love the local business deals so and they want more of them. So if you have a local business deal, definitely Groupon is the place to advertise. And I'm trying to get there. Hang on one second. I just need to pull it up, kgroupon.com. Sorry, my internet keeps going in and out. Did you pause your screen, Alicia? We still see SEO clerks. Oh, yeah. Hang on. You should see but Groupon now. It's still a good opportunity. Um, yeah. For, for business. yeah. Right. That's what I was saying. And just that especially, like, lots of local businesses, I'm just looking at this one here that's trending, are still using it, still getting lots of sales from it. Um, hang on one second. And Groupon is really focused on the local business stuff right now. So they love local business deals. Uh, let's see. So a bowling alley. You know, I mean, it still gives you good exposure. I, I definitely still recommend it for businesses. And there's new people coming on Groupon. Obviously, there's new people coming on the site each and every day. So it's still a really great way to... Um, promote businesses. Yeah, definitely. Um, sorry, Lorette. What, we just we just answered that question. That's all. That's all you missed. <laughs> um, but while while I'm in Groupon, let's look at this one. So this is air duct inspection, which we've talked about this one quite a few times. Like air duct cleaning and in inspection. Um, how how good that deal is. Five hundred twenty people bought. This one, 720 bought the annual. So you can see people are definitely still buying it for local business. I think I might be logged into Orlando. I'm not really sure which one I'm on right now, but yep, still great. All right, Lorette, take the next question. Yes, so the next question. Um... So Cynthia says, how would you list writing answers to reviews for Yelp? Fiverr would not accept it because they assumed I would be writing fake reviews. So you're writing responses to negative comments on Yelp. So hmm, maybe not really specify what you're doing. Maybe just being a little bit more vague. Just saying that I will help you with your Yelp account you know, setting it up and so forth, and don't say anything that has to do with the word reviews is a red flag. So I would take out the word reviews and just, you know, say that they'll help them with their, with their Yelp account, setting it up, and any issues that you may have and so forth. But I know the word reviews is a red flag. And then you can also put in there to make sure to um, contact you before placing the order. Um, so if that's something that they want to talk about, you know, helping with reviews, you can do that maybe in your discussion. Um, but yeah, I would just make sure not to put the word reviews. Um, let's see. Any other questions? Um, let's see. What do we got here? Um, just searching through the questions. And those of you that are um, in Jamaica, I know you had the Gustavos, I think that's what it's called. Um, it's the same thing as a Groupon. Um, yeah, so. 
if you wanted to kind of compare the two. So let's see, we don't have any other questions. Um, let's see. What's your course for Fiverr gigs? Yep, so we have a course called Freelancing Cash Machine. Yep, so we have a course. Um, it's called Freelancing Cash Machine, which was asking what is a course that has to do with uh, freelancing. So I will put that in the chat box. Um, there we go. Um, and the learning, and then we have somebody asking about the Learning Tube YouTube link. And I actually put that in the chat box as well. I will see if I can. Yeah, copy and paste it again. And you'll notice when you go to it that it automatically pops up the button for you to subscribe. So it kind of forces you to subscribe. Um, and I will do a quick video for one of our next quick tips to show you how to do that. Okay. Uh, I can't seem to copy and paste it properly. One second. And did you answer the question about writing answers to reviews for Yelp? Fiverr will not accept it? Cynthia's question? I did. Okay. Yes. All right. So we said that in the beginning that this was going to be a short webinar, 30 minutes. We're a little bit over 30 minutes. So this is the last call for questions. <laughs> last call for questions. Anybody else have any questions? Lorette is getting the link for the Fiverr course. Did you put that in the chat box, Lorette? I didn't see that. Yes. All right, and then we have a and then post it again. Yep, so for the fiber course, I put it as freelancing cash machine, and I put that into the box there. Okay. Um, and then also, Rich says, can you let us know what's the topic of the next webinar? Well, Rich, what would you like the next topic to be? <laughs> Does anybody have anything that they would specifically want to learn about? We would love to do a webinar on it. Of course, we have our you know list of things that we're going to do. But if anybody has something specific, you just let us know. Rich, do you have something that you want to learn about that we can do in the next session? You just let us know. Um, Lashawn um, saying, do you have a general site where all your courses are available? Lorette, you will give that out next week. Let's go over the site next. Oops, yeah. sorry. So Lashawn, Lorette can go over that next week. Good, Lorette. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. Keisha, say that again. What is that question? I'm not sure that question. What is that question? All right, last question is Keisha's question. She says fan paging, but I'm not sure what she's asking. So we're we're um, asking her to re to say that again. Rich says lead generation is a big interest, so Lorette, write down lead um, generation. And Keisha's okay. suggestion for a class is how to build a fan page on Facebook, so we can do some Facebook marketing. So we've got those two topics for upcoming webinars. I know we've done the Facebook marketing before, so Lorette, if you can make sure Keisha gets the link to, to the, the past um, classes, that would be good. Okay. Okay. And thank you guys so much for joining us. We are always excited to bring you the latest and greatest with the Learning Tube. Lorette, thanks so much for being here. Short Q&A session, but we loved it as always. So we love you guys. We'll see you next week with the Learning Tube. And make sure that you go out there and put some of the things that we teach you into action. Today we covered 
Fiverr, outsourcing, even making money on Fiverr, right? We were talking about Moodle and really focusing in on, you know, that thing that you want to do if you're going to work on Fiverr. Also, we talked about SEO clerks, seoclerks.com, because Rich was asking about the freelance flipping model that we talk about often. We talked about Groupon and putting local businesses on there. What did I miss, Lorette? Anything else? I think that's it. I think that's a good overview. So we are excited for you guys next week. And I think, Lorette, you wanted to do something on email marketing as well. So put that on your to-do list for an upcoming webinar. And yes, we will send out a list of upcoming webinars. Lorette publishes it on the learningtube.com, but I think it's time for an update, isn't it, Lorette? Yes. Actually, you know, funny that you say that. We're having some technical issues on that front page, and I just hired somebody on Fiverr to fix it. <laughs> so, Great. good example right there. I couldn't figure it out. And I was like, I'm not spending my time trying to figure this out. Let me just hire somebody to do it for me. <laughs> right. So, you guys all use that for this week. That's your big thing. All the things that have been roadblocks for you, go hire someone on Fiverr to get them done. And those are my final words. Bye, everybody. Bye, Lorette. Thanks. All right. Bye-bye.